Good morning, mathematicians. We had yet another issue with tech. It did not record my audio. So I am so sorry, but I have already done the writing in here as well. So um, that's okay. I think we can still walk our way through this and have a good understanding. So the first thing I wanna do is look at the title of this lesson and it says distributive property. Now. Some of you might remember distributive property and some of you might not remember this term, but down here I can see um, the definition. However, this definition is a little bit long and I'm afraid it might be a little bit confusing. So I wanna kind of break this apart. And I also see over here that they have some additional words like sum and add-ins. Okay, so sum is the answer to an addition problem like three plus four is seven, the answer is the sum, seven is the sum. And add in are those two numbers that you're adding together. Okay, so the, distribu the, the distributive property states that multiplying a sum, okay, so if, um, well, we'll look here in a minute. Multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add in and then putting them, adding them back together. So if, for example, if I wanted to do four sixes, I could break apart six into a couple ways. Five plus one is six, two plus four is six, three plus three is six. I just happen to choose this one because I think working with fives kind of works nicely off of what we did for our last video, okay? Or our last lesson where we were breaking apart using fives. So if I was to try to figure out what four fives is, that would give me 20 and four ones would give me four, and then I could take those two answers and put them together, add them together, and it would give me the answer to the original problem. Okay, now we have these square tiles down here and there's a lot of chaos, and even more so now that the answers are already on here. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at this one. It says, make an array with tiles to show six rows of seven. It is important for you to remember that rows go this direction. And when you are matching multiplication to a picture, you do need to go rows first. I know, I know we've talked about turnaround, but f you know, if you're matching an equation to a picture, it does need to match. So I'm gonna show you that this is six rows of seven. So for example, this is one row, and in that row I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is one row of seven. There's two rows of seven, three rows of seven, four rows of seven, five rows of seven, and six rows of seven. So this means that um, we ha we'd have a lot of tiles to count here. But what you can do in the distributive is you can break it apart to make your life a little bit easier. So because fives are so easy to work with, that's what they broke apart. Now, you might be wondering, like, how do you know which way the line should go? If you break apart the second number, like we did here, we broke apart seven into five and two, because remember, seven, one plus six is seven, two plus five is seven, three plus four is seven, and then four plus three is seven, five plus two is seven, six plus one is seven. So they went ahead and broke apart our last number. You can see the first number we didn't touch, so it stays the same. So if I look here to see six fives, I should see six fives. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So we have here one five, two fives, three fives, four fives, five fives and six fives. So this matches that picture. And the same over here, we should have six twos. So I see one two, two twos, a two two, three twos, four twos, five twos, and six twos. So this picture also mat or this uh, multiplication sentence also matches that picture. And the reason people will do this is sometimes working with big numbers is hard, and so sometimes people will separate it out to make their life a little bit easier. The other thing is, if you're gonna sit over here and count each tile, you run the risk of making a mistake in your counting. So the more you split these up, the less mistakes that you potentially could make because there's less to count. I always cover up the chaos just so things look a little bit more clear and I can focus on what I need. 
Now, if I'm looking here, there's a lot. And yes, you can already see the answers. But what I see is that this says six sevens, six sevens, six sevens, six sevens. So there's nothing changing here. And when you see this equal sign, I want you to think of it as you have to get this side to weigh as much as this side. And so in math, I know that that's six sevens. I'm not gonna write anything here yet, but I am gonna look at this next one and I wanted to talk to you about this. So you might be thinking, geez, what is going on here? So what they're doing is they're showing you little by little how they're breaking it apart, okay? So they're gonna say six times, and if you were to add these together, you would get seven. So we're gonna break it apart just like we did in the picture. So we're gonna break apart so we have six out of six fives and then six twos. So let's take a look at what they wrote next. That's what they wrote. They wrote six fives and then they put it there. And then they have their six twos and they put it there. So all they did was they took apart our two things that we split and they just put them into here. I know, it seems a little weird, right? Especially if you know six, like if, if I say to you six sevens and you say 42 before I'm done snapping, then you know this might not be the method for you. But if you don't know and you're still counting them up, this might be a good way for you to help like see it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve each one. You can come back up here and count if you want. You might know six fives is 30. It really doesn't matter which way you get to it, but whether you count it or you just know it, but you're gonna put six fives, so that is the answer there. Six fives is 30. And then likewise, we gotta figure out what how many blocks are here. So six twos is 12. Okay, and now you're gonna put those two together. It would be like as if you were taking these 12 and adding them there, right? You're putting them back together. So when you put them back together, it looks like this. So six sevens is 42. So $42 is what he spent on his uh, new fish. Now, down here you can see that I went ahead and I wrote out all of the different factors, uh, or not factors, the add-ins of seven, which I had also done up here, okay? So this is just other ways that you can break it apart. All right, let's flip on to the next page. And again, I apologize that this is already done for you. So the original one did not have a line here. We're gonna pretend that isn't here. And I'm gonna read this question. This is not the only way to split it up. This is one way to split it up. So we're gonna pretend. When you hear suppose, that didn't really happen. We're just gonna pretend. So Mark bought nine fish for $6 each. Now, initially, I didn't mark anything off because when you see numbers, you usually don't mark off that you understand it, even if you understand what's happening until you've actually used those. Because on this page we split up um, vertically, I'm going to continue splitting vertically. But if you would rather split horizontally, you can do that too. So I'm going to keep it nine, okay? And I want to think of all of the numbers that add together to make sense, uh, to make six. And that's going to tell me how to split this. So one plus five makes six, five plus one makes six, two plus four makes six, four plus two makes six. 3 plus 3 makes 6, 3 plus 3 makes 6. And because this is a double, I love working with doubles. So that was why I chose to split it by 9 groups of 3 and 9 groups of 3. If I was to cover this up, you would see that you have 1 group of 3, 2 groups of 3, 3 groups of 3, 4 groups of 3, 5 groups of 3, six groups of three, seven groups of three, eight groups of three, and nine groups of three. And if you did it over here, you would see the same thing, right? One group of three, two, three, and so on, right? You would get the exact same. So now when I'm looking at this, I know that I'm gonna have this group, then I'm gonna find out what it's worth, and this group, what it's worth. So when I look at this, instead of saying nine sixes, I can say nine sixes is the same as nine threes and nine threes, right? And so nine threes is 27, nine threes is 27, and when you add them together, you get 54. Okay, 
Now we're going to take a look at this next one. And again, because we've been doing all of them vertical, I'm just going to stick with that. Originally, this wasn't here. So the first thing it tells us to do is to draw a line to show how you could break apart this six by eight array into two smaller arrays for facts that you know. So you, when I think about the number eight, yes, you can split the six if you prefer, but because we've been splitting the second number, I'm gonna continue on that path. I wanna think about all of the add-ins that will make eight. One plus seven makes eight, seven plus one makes eight, two plus six makes eight, six plus two makes eight, three plus five makes eight, five plus three makes eight, and then four plus four makes eight. Well, to me, I see yet another double. When I see that, that means I only have to figure out it once and then I have the answer for both. So I like to do the double. So I'm gonna go over one, two, three, four and draw this line. And to prove that that is six fours, let's count it up. We have one, two, three, four, two fours, three fours, four fours, five fours, six fours, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing six groups of four and six groups of four. Okay. So what two numbers are you multiplying? Six and four, six and four. You might have done six and two, six and six. You might have done six and one, six and seven. You might have done six and three, six and five. I did fours just because that's easier. So now what we have to ask ourselves is if I were to count up six fours, I would get, that's right, 24. And if I did it on this side, I would also count 24. So now you would just add those together. But if you were given just this problem written like that and you had to fill some stuff in, this is how you would go about it. So again, there's no change here. We're trying to get this to be the same as that. And I know it's a lot to look at. So I'm gonna actually cover up what we don't need. And again, we decided to do four plus four is eight. If you did two and um, six, then that's what you're gonna put here. If you did one and seven, put that there. If you did three and five, put that there. But I did four and four, so that's what I'm gonna write. Because this essentially says six times eight. And that is what this one says. So these are actually correct. Even though there's less numbers here, there it's the same problem. This problem is just separated out a little bit more. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna do six fours, just like I was talking about earlier. There's six fours there, and there are six fours here. So we'll write six fours and then six fours. We know six fours is 24, and we know six fours is 24, so we're gonna add those together, and you should get 48. Good. So for these last two, you can split them how you like, I just chose a random spot to split. And so what I know is that there are one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So my first number is five. Okay? And then depending on where you split it, if you split it here, yours is gonna look different than mine. If you split it in the same place as me, then you should have the same uh, problem that I do. So what I have showing here is that I have five threes. Here's one three, two threes, three threes, four threes, and five threes, right? So I wrote down five threes. If I saw nothing else on this paper, right? Sorry, I can only cover so well with my hands. That would show that I have a picture that says I have five threes. And over here, I'm showing that I have five fives. If I look at this, I can count that there are five fives. One, two, three, four, five. Each one has five pieces, right? There's one five, two fives, three fives, four fives, and five fives. So that's why I write that there like this. So in the first picture, we saw five threes, and in the second picture, we saw five fives. So now we're going to add up their two products. So five threes is 15 and five fives is 25. If you're not sure, you can stop the video and, and count them. And then we're gonna go ahead and add, and of course I like to add uh, vertically. So five and five is 10. You can never have two numbers in one spot. You leave the smaller number. 
the zero is worth less than the one. The one is worth 10 and we carry that. And I count up when I have a carry. So we have 20, 30, 40. If you said two, three, four, that's fine. But it is 20, 30, 40. So our answer is 40. Now for this last one, stop, pause, try it on your own. You can see what I did. So obviously I don't want you just to copy if you're gonna stop and pause. If you're not, then let's just chat about it. You can split this wherever you like. Again, we've been doing all of them vertical, so I'm gonna stay vertical. So when I look at this, what I can count regardless of which side I'm on, there are one, two, three, four rows. If I come over here, there are one, two, three, four rows. That number doesn't change. So for these, I both need to start with four. Where it changes is here. How many are in each? I count one, two, three, four. So if I was to count this, I can see that I have one group of four, two groups of four, three groups of four, and then four groups of four. And so that's why this one says four fours. That is what this picture shows. The picture over here is slightly different. It doesn't show four fours, right? If I count, I see one, two, three. So it has one three, two threes, three threes, and then four threes. So that's why this is written as four threes. This picture, this sentence matches that picture. And so when you multiply this out, that's right, you're gonna get 16 plus 12, which is 28. Now, for those of you that are wondering, what about if I wanna split it horizontally? If you split it horizontally, the first number changes and the second number stays the same, okay? But I do wanna show you that we did practice a while ago. We did practice splitting them up horizontally. So we went this way, right? So this was that we had five eighths and this was one out of eight. So that's just something to think about. If you are curious, you can split it horizontally. Now, if you are watching this as a non-student of mine and you're trying to learn distributive, I would highly suggest if you happen to have this math book that you try some of these problems on your own, especially these with the what's the error and all of that good stuff. Um, and if you are in my third grade class, we will be going over this today at 11 and you will want to check your um, assignment to know which ones that you need to do. But I am going to do, uh, I'm going to have you guys do one, two, three, four, five, six, so all of them. And we're going to also do... Um, Let's do one, two, and we'll do three so we don't forget how to round, okay? So those are the ones that I'm going to have you do, and um, good luck if you're doing this on your own. If you are um, just watching this, make sure you subscribe and like, leave a positive comment or question. Um, I do monitor my school-related uh, content, so uh, otherwise, I will see you guys later.